A new way to upcycle plastics by turning them into chemicals useful for energy storage, such as fuel cells or liquids that store hydrogen energy. Scientists from Nanyang Technological University have come up with the method that they claim can tackle Singapore's waste problem. Uh, these are all that's needed, an LED light source and a catalyst to dissolve these plastics at room temperature. Under the process, most everyday plastics can be broken down, such as plastic bags, plastic containers, as well as styrofoam boxes. And joining us this evening to share more is Associate Professor Su Han Sen from the School of Chemistry, Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology at NTU Singapore. Uh, you brought all your, well, some representative materials and as well as the basic components of an experiment in. Could you show us how this process works? Uh, sure thing. So I can actually show a quick demonstration of how simple the setup can be. What we typically do is to dissolve the photocatalyst in a solvent together with the plastic. And here I'm using a solvent that is often used in a nail polish remover except that this is not actually our optimal solvent. And what we do is to, um, it looks blue because there's a photocatalyst in there that absorbs light. And what we would typically do is to add, this is an example, a, pot, a styrofoam and seal it up. So what happens is that uh, plastics like styrofoam actually dissolve fairly quickly. And we would then seal it under pure oxygen and then turn on a white LED similar to this one except that we're using this one, which is mm. about 50 to 80 times more intense. So we will then irradiate this at room temperature uh, for several days. And after that, the plastics in there will be converted into more useful products like formic acid, acetic acid, and benzoic acid. Uh, uh, Prof, how did you and your team actually land on this idea? Uh, what was the thought process behind it, behind you know, sort of combining those elements together and using that LED light source as a sort of kind of, you, you do need LED, specifically LED light, right? Right. So um, my team has been working on developing uh, energy and sustainability solutions since I started NTU. So we are especially interested in developing solutions that lead to fewer secondary problems. So I believe that most people are very concerned about the global plastic waste problem. But actually, many existing methods like incineration and the use of biodegradable plastics are actually expedient remedies that lead to and aggravate global climate change. So what's happening is that the carbon in these plastics will be converted into greenhouse gases. So that's why we chose to focus on using renewable energy like light or electricity so that we can convert the carbon in these plastics into useful chemical products so that we can keep the carbon circulating in the economy instead of being released as greenhouse gases. Mm. Professor, you, know, you pointed to those items in front of you. Uh, you picked them because they, I suppose, they exemplify these different types of common everyday plastics. That's One right. reason why, although you say there is concern about plastic waste, the fact is only 9% of plastic is recycled, let alone Mm -hmm. upcycled, which your, your team uh, aims to do or has been able to do with this particular process. Uh, and one problem is that plastics need to be sorted into different varieties so that for the standard recycling procedures, they can actually deal with them. But your process gets around this needing to categorise and sort the different kinds of plastics. Right. So that's a great question. So uh, right now, the main way that recycling is done is through mechanical recycling, which means that what we do is that we actually melt and try to remold the plastic into a form that can be used in its original purpose or something similar. But this actually only applies to plastics like PET, like this bottle, or in polyester clothes. And these constitute only about 10% of the plastics that's produced and used globally. So for plastics like uh, PS in styrofoam, because it contains a lot of air, typically when it's mechanically recycled, they don't retain their original mechanical properties. So our process actually breaks down the chemical bonds in these plastics and converts the carbon into useful chemical products. So since these are actually derived from fossil fuels, we are essentially trying to replicate what a, a petrochemical refinery does, except that we can use renewable energy 
and do things at much milder reaction conditions. Mm. Singapore has got its very specific green goals, uh, plans for to go net zero and so on. Uh, how green is this whole process? Right. That's a good point too. So um, we hope that our technology can actually help Singapore to achieve its green goals uh, earlier. So our technology can apply to uh, all these plastics shown here, the ones with resin coats 2 to uh, 7, including the PE in plastic bags, the PVC in pipes, the PP in storage containers, as well as baby bottles, the PS in styrofoam, and some others as well. So these constitute about 80% um, of the plastics that's produced globally. And so if we're ambitious, what that means is that we can actually increase Singapore's recycling rate from the current 6% to up to maybe 80 or even 85%. Yeah. And so what that means is that we can actually dramatically reduce our greenhouse gas emissions from the plastics incineration as much as nine to 10 times, which translates to about three to 4% of Singapore's annual greenhouse gas emissions. Oh, uh, what you just demonstrated to us, if it can be executed to scale, Mm -hmm. and within a modest budget. This would be amazing on its own, because we're right. always greedy. We're thinking any technology, this process of catalyst plus irradiation, can we expand it so that it has other applications, even at this very early point? Do you see that that is a possibility? Uh, definitely. So one of the products that we're most excited about is actually formic acid, which, is, uh, which can be used as an efficient form of uh, liquid storage for hydrogen fuel. But actually, um, the products that we generate also have some other existing applications that probably you'll be familiar with. Um, for example, acetic acid is something that I think uh, probably most of us consume because uh, vinegar, vinegar typically vinegar. contains about 4 to 8% acetic acid. So I went to my kitchen and found that my um, mango chutney as well as the hoisin sauce actually contains acetic acid. And it also has some other applications as an antiseptic as well as a uh, solvent. So, Another one that we produce is actually benzoic acid, which can be used as a preservative and it can be derived from styrofoam. So this is actually sodium benzoate from Phun Huat. Uh, this is actually the salt form of benzoic acid and it's often used as a preservative that's found in jams, fruit juices and carbonated drinks. But benzoic acid can also be used as an antiseptic as well as antifungal agent. Well, Professor, uh What's next then for your team? I mean, it, it's, uh, we're talking about commercial viability here. Right. What's the plan? So we're working on several aspects right now. Uh, one is to scale up and speed up the process. And another is to target higher value products. So um, we are hoping to work with industry partners on all of these different aspects. But I would say that commercialization will probably be not that soon. So we've mainly demonstrated a lab scale uh, process as a proof of concept. But um, conservatively, I would say that it will probably take maybe a, an hour, another five to ten more years before we can actually reach the scales needed at ton scales to process plastics um, that can be commercialized. We wish you the very best on that journey. Thank you so much for coming in and demonstrating uh, this new technology uh, with us, Professor. We've been speaking there to Associate Professor Su Hansen from the School of Chemistry, Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology at NTU.